The Honorable Leader of the New Democratic Party. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question is for the Premier. Uh, renovations have been a, an increasing problem ever since the renovations ban was lifted, and the new rules are not solving the problem. Uh, Colby Bolivar and his roommate, for example, they received a renovation notice two days after the ban was lifted, and uh, in accordance with the rules, the landlord uh, provided them with uh, three months' rent. But the difficulty is their current rent, it's in Rockingham, is for a two-bedroom, $900 a month. Uh, but in Nova Scotia today, the average unoccupied two-bedroom apartment is $1,950 a month. Uh, so uh, will the Premier recognize, or, or does he recognize, that when we're in a 1% vacancy environment, what people need is not compensation for renovation, but the Question. ability to stay in the homes they have today. The Honourable Premier. Thank the, thank the member. This is obvi obviously uh, an, an important issue. We understand the, the housing crisis that exists in this province. That's why under the, the minister's leadership, we've, we've so, uh, worked so aggressively, so quickly, so urgently to add supply to the market. That's, that's really the way out of this, Mr. Speaker. There is a process in place uh, for, for, for you know, people when people are asked to leave their, their, their dwelling for renovations. I mean, the member, I think, referenced yesterday some people who had to leave because the house was deemed unsafe. Of course this is going to happen. Of course we're concerned about the ramifications of it. But there is a process in place uh, to protect tenants and also protect landlords. The process is there, and I urge everyone to follow that process. The Leader of the New Democratic Party. The difficulty, Mr. Speaker, is that in a 1% vacancy environment, landlords very often skirt the process. So Brandy McGuire lives with her children in a one-bedroom apartment that she's paying $1,400 a month for in Bedford. So she spoke out this week about how the landlord has turned off the internet, which the tenants pay for, and has failed to uh, repair the plumbing in order to get the tenants to leave mm -hmm. so the landlord can take the building down and put up a bigger development. Mark Culligan, a community legal worker, says of this that landlords are making a financial calculation that it's cheap cheaper to bluff people into leaving or to pay small fines in order to expedite their development project. Does the Premier understand that in a 1% vacancy rate environment, tenants don't have a lot of cards in their hands? So that if renovations in fact are permitted, uh, we are going to have these kind of problems because landlords are going to find ways to get around the rules. The Honourable Premier. Well, Mr. Speaker, I would just look. These these stories, of course, have uh, an, an impact on us as humans. Uh, of course, nobody likes to hear 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 of these situations. So, um, but I want to acknowledge as well that there is a process. The process has been has been triggered a number of times, and my understanding is in in in, in pretty much every one of those situations. The tenant, you know, was, was, I don't know, victorious is the right word or whatever, but I believe the process is working to protect tenants. How about I say it that way, Mr. Speaker? Uh, but uh, the process is there. I urge people to follow. We have a, an, an advertising campaign. We want to make sure people know about the process. So when we, when we talk about getting the word out about the process, advertising the process, of course the opposition is not happy with us advertising the process, but I want to say to, to Nova Scotians, we understand the housing crisis, and we are focused on it. There's stuff in the budget to address it. I hope the members opposite get behind the budget and get behind so solving the housing crisis. The, the Honourable Leader of the New Democratic Party on his final supplementary. Mr. Speaker, the Premier is alarmingly uninformed about what is taking place in concrete situations with renovations. Well, a, si a single parent in Lunenburg who pays 550 a month for a two-bedroom, she had a renovation, followed the process, won her case, and then still saw the demolition crew come to take down the walls and the floors from out of her apartment. And commenting on the case, the minister said, as the premier has closely just said, said he thinks there's been some confusion about the new rules. But, Mr. Speaker, there's no confusion about the fact that these various situations could not happen if we still had the renovations ban that the government rightly extended on January 28th into March without being an absolute convention of the law. So does the Premier recognize that all of these things that are taking place across the province are happening because a 1% vacancy rate is a very poor time to lift the a ban on renovations? Premier. 
Th thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I, I guess what, 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 I would, what I would say is alarming is when we have a member who's not concerned about the safety of residents, the safety of the dwelling. So obviously we know if there are times which the member referred to very directly in this House that uh, a dwelling was deemed unsafe, I believe, by a, the, the fire inspector, Mr. Speaker. If the member is suggesting that the government should ever look the other order, way. Order, please. Order, please. The Premier is the floor. The Honourable Premier. If the member is suggesting that in a situation like that, the government look the other way and allow Nova Scotians to live in unsafe dwellings, I fundamentally disagree with the member. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.